Hi everyone, let's take a look at this statement of cost of goods sold and income statement. And this is problem 16-1b. Okay, we have the following information for, for Earl Corporation for 2008. And you can see in uh, just to the left of my mouse here, um, we have the beginning and ending in inventory balances for materials, work and process and finished goods. And then we have a list of items like advertising expense, depreciation expense, direct labor, heat, light, and power. So we essentially have lots of accounts that were in the general ledger that we've assembled for 2008. The first requirement will, is what we're going to tackle first. We're going to prepare the 2008 statement of cost of goods manufactured. Okay, so let me slide down. And I'll show you that I've put the headings in already. And I've started working this problem, but just a little bit. We'll start off with work and process inventory on January 1st. And up here, we see that the beginning work and process to the left of my mouse was $225,000. So I'm going to put that over here. Okay. And then we need to consider direct materials. So we had beginning materials inventory at the beginning of the year. And uh, that beginning amount was, I think, 125000 Yes, to the left of my mouse. And we need to add in the purchases. Right? This is how we we'll put together a statement of cost of goods manufactured. You sort of have to follow the flow here. Um, you know what? I'm going to use this indent feature. See if I can get these to line up right. Yeah, I think that'll work a lot better. Okay, so the purchases... Um, hopefully they provided that it was 235 right there the left of my mouse is materials purchased during the year it was 235,000 okay and if we add those two together we get cost of materials available for sale and then I'll use the indent again and I'll underline this and sum from above, and we get 360,000 cost of goods available. Okay, now if we take, uh, th then the next thing we need to consider is we need to back out what inventory was on hand at the end of the end of the period. So we'll subtract out less the materials inventory as of December of the end of the year, right? I'm going to indent this as well. Um, probably I want to expand this a little bit, maybe shrink this one a little bit, so that uh, uh, the numbers don't bleed over into the column. And the ending materials was 155,000 to the left of my mouse, right? So well, I'm going to, uh, I'll enter that as a positive number. We'll underline that, and what we will compute is the cost of direct materials used in production. Okay, now let me capitalize that first C and let me indent this so that um, I will just line it up here and we'll put it here. So we'd say equals that cell, cell D, uh, what is that cell? D29 less cell D30. And that gets us uh, 205,000 cost of direct materials used in production. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to consider uh, the next component, which is direct labor, right? In this case, direct labor was added to, to, um, uh, to, the, cost, to the cost involved of the cost involved in manufacturing the product during the, during the month or during the year, actually. Um, so we'll look up here and we look at direct labor, it's $240,000, so we add that in. Okay, then after that we need to add in the next component, which is factory overhead. Okay, now I'm going to pause the, the demo right now and then type in all the factory overhead items. Uh, otherwise, we're going to spend a lot of time just watching me pull the items from above, right? So I'm going to drop in the indirect labor of $28,000. I'm going to drop in the depreciation expense on the factory equipment only. I'll drop in heating, light, and power. 
and a few other items. So uh, let me stop the tape now. When, when I come back in a second, all of that will be in. Okay, now you can see on the screen, I did type in all the factory overhead items in our statement of cost of goods manufactured right in here. And all those informations were provided above in the problem. Okay, and if we sum all of those items, there's my formula summing from cells D34 to D40, we get $82,400. Now one thing to note is that I'm only considering items that relate to the manufacturing process. So we're only including depreciation expense for the factory equipment and we're only ex including heat, light, and power for the factory, right? You may have other items that relate to other parts of the business like the administration portion of the business. Those won't go on the statement of cost of goods manufactured. All right, once we have that, we can produce the total manufacturing cost during the year. So we would take uh, the, the, the work, we would take the work in process that was in the beginning, then we would take the, um, oh, well, actually, let me work this a little bit uh, easier. Total manufacturing costs during the year are going to be equal to the work in process plus the materials used in production plus direct labor and total factory overhead. And that comes up to 752400 That includes all the cost elements that make up manufacturing costs during the year. Um, actually, that actually is the total manufacturing cost incurred uh, during the year. So then, if we want to, you know what, I've, I've missed, miss, I, I have grabbed the wrong formula here. I want to slide this down one. What I gave you was the total manufacturing cost. Okay, that's the 752. Now, the total manufacturing cost incurred during the year was simply the, the cost of materials used in production, and I apologize for my error, the direct labor, and the factory overhead. When we add those three together, we get 527400 of total manufacturing cost during the year. Then we would add in the work in process that was available at the beginning of the year, and we add to the manufacturing cost incurred during the year, and we come up with the total manufacturing cost to account for. We have one less thing, one more thing to subtract out, and hopefully you understand that would be the ending work in process. So we, we need to back out uh, the work in process and uh, if I can spell it right, at the end of the year. Okay, so we back that out, and I'm going to slide up to show you where that came from. That's 210,000. It comes right from there. The work in process to the left of my mouse was the ending amount. So we put in 210,000 here. Okay, we underline that, and then we can take the 752 less the 210, and that's the number we're looking for, which is the cost of goods manufactured. Okay. Oh, and normally you only capitalize um, the, just the first word is the normal way that I've seen most statements prepared. So we would make that 542, format it with a double underline. Uh, since it's the last one, we might put a dollar sign. Now, just to take care of all that little formatting, this wouldn't be capitalized, right? Um, and I think that, I think I did everyone else the right way. And then normally you format the first occurrence in any column. So I'll highlight that cell, that cell, that cell. Put the dollar sign off of my uh, my ribbon. And uh, now we have completely completed uh, part one of this problem. Okay, now I've slid back up to the top just so we can take a look at the second instruction, which was to prepare the 2008 income statement. In the interest of saving time, I'm not going to work this step by step in Excel, but I am going to illustrate the answer. So let me slide on down. Uh, the, what, the part of the screen you see now 
was the solution to part one where we computed cost of goods manufactured. Now here's the solution to this problem in front of you. We would prepare an income statement and we would drop in sales and then we sort of walk that same command for finished goods that we did all we walk that same chain of taking beginning plus what was either used or applied. Okay, let me step back just a second there. When we put together the income statement, we would start off with sales, and then we walk that um, last area of inventory, which is finished goods. And what I mean by we walk it, we start with the beginning, we add in whatever we added to it, right? So it would have been whatever was transferred in, and in this case, it would be the cost of goods manufactured at $552,400. That gets us a cost of goods available, and then we back off the ending amount to the left of my mouse, which was $210,000, and, and that gets us cost of goods sold, which is $547,400. One thing to keep in mind, you, will, you typically will have a difference between cost of goods sold and cost of goods manufacturing. Um, and the difference is, one relates to the time period in which you made a product, and the other relates to the time period in which you sold the product. So in other words, if we've got a change in inventory levels between an accounting period, we're going to have a different dollar amount for cost of goods manufactured and cost of goods sold. Uh, sold. And, you know, those two numbers are to the left of my mouse. Um, only if you started with the same beginning inventory and ended with the same ending inventory, uh, will those numbers be exactly the same? Okay, and some businesses do operate that way. Uh, they produce whatever they need for the period and sell it. Um, okay, so then we produce cost of goods sold of 547400 If we subtract that from sales, we have gross profit. From there, we back off the operating expenses. Now, I'm not going to go through the details, but you can find the operating expenses listed above on the, on the product, on the problem. And you'll see that these are the other costs that, that weren't accounted for within, within the um, cost of goods manufactured. Eventually we come up with total operating expenses, we subtract that from gross profit, and we derive net income. And that takes care of part two of this problem, everyone. Thank you.